Test benches are structures used to test a unit on the test. A software test bench is a test bench that is expected to run only in software. So once you have finished a uh, design, you want to test the design. Testing is a whole different uh, science on its own, and we will talk about it in a later module. But um, at its core, testing, at least functional testing or verification of the design, means that you want to ensure that the design is performing the function that you want it to perform. And it's actually very straightforward how you do this. Um, you apply inputs to the, uh, to the unit that you want to test. You observe the outputs and you compare the outputs to outputs that you know to be true like the golden results that you expect to come out of a correctly functioning unit and then make a decision about whether or not this unit is uh, functional. So when you write a design in VHDM, the um, environment or setup which we use to uh, uh, test a unit on this and the test is called the test bench. And when we use the word test bench, we usually mean a software test bench. So a software test bench is basically a test bench that is expected to run only in simulation. So you would use a simulation environment, usually within an integrated design environment, and use that to run the software test bench. So the test bench is actually itself a VHDL design. Um, so it's, it's, it is in itself a VHDL design, and uh, it's a very unique design in that its entity does not have any ports. So the software test bench normally doesn't have any ports, it just has an architecture. And within that architecture, you usually should have um, only a single component, and that component is the unit under test. And then you instantiate a single instance of the unit under test, and this is the test upon which we would run the uh, tests. The fact that the software test bench is only expected to run in software means that it will not pass through synthesis. And so while all the VHDL within the unit under test has to be synthesizable, the um, VHDL that we use outside the unit under test within the test bench can be unsynthesizable. And so you can go nuts with syntax. You can do anything you want to do within uh, the body of the test bench because it's not supposed to run through synthesis. You can use un unsynthesizable constructs. You can use loops any way you want. You can use variables and signals and mix them. You can do whatever you want. And this is really the main advantage of software test benches is that they allow you a lot of flexibility, basically programming like flexibility. And you will use this flexibility to do a couple of things. First, to generate inputs that you can apply to the unit under test. And second, to assess the outputs that come out of the unit under test. So generating inputs means that we generate waveforms that we apply to the unit under test. And we talked a lot about how we can generate waveforms when we talked about the weight statement in VHDL. And this is one structure that can be used to generate a waveform. So in this case, D input, which is DN, which is a bus, and it's a four bed bus, is going to have a value of one after 10 nanoseconds, value of two after 100 nanoseconds, value of three after 100 nanoseconds, and then it will loop and continue to uh, periodically update these values. So when we discussed the weight statement, we said that any weight statement that has an explicit delay, weight four, or a weight statement without an argument, which is basically weight for infinity, is unsynthesizable. But they can be used in the uh, software test bench because the software test bench is not going to pass through synthesis. And so you can generate any kind of signal that you want. You can generate uh, periodic signals, aperiodic signals, anything you want. The second structure construct we all, uh, almost exclusively use with test benches uh, is something called an assert statement. And assert statements are, uh, they're just embedded test statements within the test bench. What they do is they look at a condition 
And if that condition is met, they perform a certain asser assertion. And so let's look, for example, at this example of using the assert statement. And this is a, a, an example where the assert statement is used concurrently. This means that it is written outside of a process and it exists concurrently or in parallel with the, all the other statements uh, outside the process. And so this is going to look at the value of A of 16, of the bit A of 16 of uh, the bus A. And if it sees that this value is 1, it will report a certain message, which is this, overflow has occurred. And this message will be of a severity level error. And so we have to talk about um, a few details here about what, what's happening with the assert statement. So after writing the assert statement, what you have to write here between assert and report is a condition. So th this can be anything that reduces to a Boolean value. If this condition is evaluated to be true, then the report uh, string is going to be printed to terminal. And this string can be any string that you uh, write yourself or that you form from values within uh, your design. And then there is the severity keyword. And after the keyword, we have a, a bunch of severity levels, possible severity levels. Uh, they are specifically um, uh, note, warning, error, and failure. Note, warning, and error are three uh, qualitative statements about what has happened. So if you look at something and it's just um, worth noting, then it would be of note level. Uh, if, if it's a big deal, then sh it should be of error level. Failure, on the other hand, is a specifically important uh, severity level because it will cause the simulation to halt. So if there's a failure uh, level uh, assertion, then the simulation will stop. All the other assertions will just display a message and assert a certain severity level. Um, notice that this assert statement is constantly watching the value of A of 16 because it is written concurrently with the body of the architecture. So it's always monitoring the value of A of 16. Uh, by the way, all the parts of the assert statement are optional. So you can write them or ignore them. Even the condition, if you don't write the condition, the assert statement will assume the condition is always true. If you don't like the if you don't write the report, then a uh, default string is displayed. And if you don't write the severity level, then usually a severity level of error will be assumed. So everything here is uh, is optional. You can also use assert statements within processes. So here we have uh, an assert being used um, to uh, write this uh, string, and we do not have a condition. So we just um, write the keyword report right after the keyword uh, assert, and there's nothing in between. This means that this assertion will always be true. So it will always be true. And uh, it will display this uh, string, which is actually a, a kind of interesting because it's, it's a concatenation of two strings. The first string is explicitly stated as value of the out is. And then this is the concatenation operator. And then here we have, uh, we are using a, an attribute, uh, specifically the image attribute. And what this does is it will return, so this attribute will return the string equivalent of the integer value within the braces. And so we will display the value of D out as an integer instead as a string. So if it's 16, it will be changed into ASCII 16. But the problem is dout itself is not an integer. That's not a big deal. We can convert it to integer using the conv integer uh, function, which converts standard logic vectors into integers. And again, there's no severity level here. So the severity level is assumed to be error, although it shouldn't be in this case, but it's just assumed to be error. So uh, how I mean, if this assert statement is constantly watching the value of A of 16, the one that, that we discussed for uh, concurrent uh, statements, uh, what's this assert statement doing? I mean, how many times, how often will, it be dis will, it, will this message display? Now, this is used within a process. 
So the assert statement itself is going to be uh, implemented sequentially. So it will implement sequentially with the, whenever the process is called. So it will just implement an order within the process like all the other statements. So this process has a sensitivity list which uh, includes only clock. And so the process will be called whenever clock makes a transition. However, there's an if, uh, uh, if statement within the process that qualifies the transition that we are interested in as the positive edge transition. And so everything here only occurs when there is a positive edge. However, the assert report happens outside this uh, if statement. And so the assert report is actually going to be displayed twice per cycle, whenever the clock makes a positive transition and whenever the clock makes a negative transition on all clock events. If the assert statement was written within the, uh, the, uh, the if condition, it would have only asserted on the positive edges of the clock. It's also worth noting what value of D out will be displayed by the assert statement. So assume that uh, before we entered the process, D3, for example, was equal to 5. So at this statement, D out is going to take the value of D3 and it's going to be 5. And let's assume that the old value of D out was uh, 1, right? So what value will be displayed when we reach the end of the process? And you know that the value on the positive edge of the clock will be 1 because the assignment that happens here, which assigns the value of 5 to D out, is only a transaction. And it doesn't become an event until we reach the end of the process. And so this is still going to see D out as 1. However, when the process is called again on the falling edge of the clock, then this change would actually have happened and will become an event and D out will actually be 5 and this will display 5. And so you will see it actually displaying the old value on the positive edge and the updated value on the negative edge. Now, let's talk about um, synthesizability of the assert statement. And this is not a very intelligent thing to ask because asserts are usually used within test benches. And test benches, by definition, software test benches, are not supposed to be uh, synthesizable. That's the whole thing about them. And so whether or not asserts are synthesizable is, should not be a big deal because they shouldn't actually have to contend with synthesis. But sometimes people will use uh, assert statements within the unit under test because most synthesizer will, synthesizers will not actually produce an error, a synthesis error if they see an assert statement. They just ignore it because it's very safe to ignore an assert statement when you are synthesizing. It doesn't actually change the design in any way. It's, it is just a passive monitor. One last thing I want to talk about is the distinction between software test benches and hardware test benches. So software test benches are obvious. They are software constructs that are only run in simulation to verify the design. Hardware test benches are actually, um, they are designs themselves that contain the unit under test as well as test circuitry. But um, the, this hardware test bench is supposed to pass through synthesis. In fact, it is supposed to be implemented in hardware. And there's a couple of questions here about, about hardware test benches. What kind of statements can we use with it? So can we use unsynthesizable statements? And obviously, no. So we cannot use unsynthesizable code. You have to use synthesizable code because this is a hardware entity. The second question is, why would you do this? Why would you use a hardware test bench when you can use a software test bench that gives you more flexibility? And the answer is speed. Hardware test benches run as fast as, usually as fast as the underlying unit under test can run. Software simulation takes a lot longer than the actual hardware will run. And so when you need to run exhaustive tests involving real life situations, it, it is usually much better to do so using hardware test benches. And the third question is, would we actually waste an entire tape out of an ASIC just to perform hardware test benching? And the answer is no. Um, when, we, you, when we use hardware test benches, we usually do so on FPGAs, not uh, on ASICs. When uh, testing hardware is used on ASICs, 
we usually call that design for testability. And that testing hardware is usually expected to be part of a finished product and not just of a prototyping stage.